against me. I really don't care. You know what? I don't. I don't care. I like what he did. I didn't understand exactly that one mention about, like, self-fulfillment, but it really wasn't that. I will say they did have a blowout quarter. I like his bombastic nature. I am calling him officially right here, right now. The reference point was supposed to be 10 bucks last week. And all the checks I did, the reference, not seven in quarter, right. but 10 bucks. Carl, the idea that people come in and start buying this at a level to sales 20, 20 times. Do they even know what they're getting? I mean, uh, there's a new audience of people, whether it be SPACs, whether it be direct listings. They're fascinated. You think the Robin Hood people call up Morgan Stanley and let them know? Somebody at Robin Hood says, oh, yeah, we got 10 million to buy. I don't think so. No, but, David, <laughs> it, they think it goes up. Right. They, they, well, what, I mean, I, I'm in a fight with about 100 people on Twitter right now who say, why don't you like SPACs? They go up. Oh, OK. Well, why don't you know, the pounds here? It goes up. I'm not talking Snowflake. Snowflake has yeah. got amazing revenue growth. So no one really knows how to price that. But these companies, the pounds here doesn't have that kind of growth. So, I mean, why should I give it the same, uh, a better multiple than a workday, which is recommended today? Uh, uh, and service now. Yep. Uh, why, why am I getting better uh, than, than Adobe? Seasoned companies that know what the hell they're doing that really have great management. You know, not making money. Uh, I think that they may feel that they have a hold on, a, what, 150 clients that are unshakable. I'm not sure about that. I spoke to, to uh, Mark Benioff last night from Salesforce. He's got a new uh, program to be able to roll off vaccines. I think if he decided to turn his guns towards some of the things that they do uh, with, with partner with Snowflake, I think they can, they can, if they can, they can go after Palantir. What is their edge? Because, they, because they're very good at, at uh, targeting Terrorist Terrorists. organizations. Does that mean they're very good at targeting people who might want insurance? Palantir, when I read that they could sell down and have more votes, I mean, kind of a yunker state over there. I, <laughs> I said, who? All right, a sucker's born every minute if you want that. But, David, a lot of people don't even care about corporate governance. They're oh, so yes. used to A and B shares and, you know, companies that just don't, that the, where your vote means nothing, that uh, they, the people don't even think about it. I think you and I think about it because we don't, we don't think it's fair. But yeah, they don't seem to care. Listen, I mean, no, look, I, I think that these are things where people say, OK, uh, it, it's a company, security, cloud. Uh, uh, it's got all the right buzzwords. And then they look at it and they are going to say, look, that's an interesting stock price. It, it comes around 10. Of course, the actual dollar price, David, means absolutely nothing except for the Robin Hood people. Right. right. Well, you know, on that note, what do you, do you have any expectations here? Again, it's a direct listing, so it's not like there's a book here that they've got together of everybody who's put in their order. It is the right niche, and I think people will sell some of the great cyber security uh, and, and, and analytics companies like a Splunk that I had on last week to go buy Palantir. They're not going to look at that governance structure because it bores them. Well, I don't think it's just the time to double down. I mean, it's at 23. It's a, you know, I really like to double down when something has come down significantly. Now, I think it is a great, great software company. Unfortunately, a lot of it's black box. We're not sure they're doing. It's also been propped up because it is a, and I shouldn't, that's not a fair term, but it's a Kathy Wood stock, and that's ARK Investments. But it's good. But no, you don't double down until something's come down significant enough to change your basis. Pounds your big revenue boost. That's an ape stock. Yes. Uh, they don't tell you much, though. It's one page. Well, it's a black box, David. Even we don't know what they're in. I actually went to look for the filing, uh, but it hadn't been filed yet. Um, so all you're going to deal with on Palantir is one page. Uh, they, I don't know if, how much. I mean, it gives you some numbers. Well, there's a big And it gives up. you an outlook. Go look at the hand. handout. very good. Oh, I didn't see the handout. Okay. There you go. I, I have the hand. I'll give it to you during the break. Let's look at him. He's always more prepared than I am. Uh, Palantir... Um, with this move today, is going to go back into the gr back into the black for the year. Well, that's important because this is a, a stock that represented uh, a whole new class of companies that were, I I'll call them wood. This was like an original Woodstock. Was remember it was a direct listing, so they didn't actually raise capital through the sale of the stock, but they obviously had a lot of selling shareholders. I think that because it had been a private company for what twenty years. I mean, very long period of time. You know, it's that it sat in private hands. Okay, but let me tell you what I think is going on. Palantir's got a lot of hot money in it. Now, some people call it mean. That's ridiculous. I'm tired of that term. It doesn't mean anything. It's got hot money. People don't really know what you know. They just bought it because they thought it was going higher. You know that there's a lot of thought it was going to go higher stocks out there. That's my new long form name for meme. And so you don't want to be in there because the fellow shareholders are just too skittish the moment the stock 
goes down. Yeah, Palantir is interesting. They they reiterated their call for continued revenue gain, but their operating margin is going to go from 30 a year on year to maybe 20 in the current quarter. Oh no, that's just it's it's. I don't want to call it a disaster because, but you know, revenue grows 16 percent from government. That's the slowest. Uh, last year they did a <laughs> they did they have adjusted for cash flow only 30 million dollars. Uh, they're doing so poorly in terms of the of order growth. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, look, I don't want to dwell on that because that's kind of a, a stock you never really heard of if it weren't for Kathy Wood. You know what? I've had it with Palantir. I mean, it could be a meme stock. It could be whatever. The guy was cursing on the conference call. I can certainly do without that. But what really matters is they do not have the business that I need to see. That, that company is what I call big hat. And no cattle. Remember, we don't care where stocks come from. We care where it's going. And I think this one is not going to go far at all. I'd like to see you in another stock, not that one. What do you think about Palantar? Okay, Palantir has shifted. They are now, they've got religion. They're doing the pivot. Now, I think Palantir is one of the best quarters. I, I had disliked the company for a very long time. Stock has been climbing up ever since that quarter. It's deservedly so, as they got a lot of good government business. What do you that think? That was a great quarter, Palantir. I remain a buyer. I even told the CFO bye, bye, bye. that recently. He was a little skeptical of my own intentions, but I like Palantir. Yeah, okay, yeah. I have been against Palantir for some time until they put together a terrific quarter, and I told the CFO that, and I think that they should come on because the stock is going. Higher. Palantir actually has real business. I was kind of, I was a little skeptical about those fellows. That's the second time I've honored Will Frost. Renaissance was the other, I think. But I got to tell you, here's the way I feel about Palantir. They had a really good quarter, and they actually lived up to their hype. So I am reluctant to say anything bad about them, and they're going to make money. So I say Palantir, two cheers for Palantir. That was a dynamite quarter. We got an upgrade today. I feel strong. I mean, I have disliked these guys for a long time. Not anymore. I am on, I am on the Palantir team. Okay? I am Mr. Palantir as far as I'm concerned. I, I like these guys. They still hate me. I like them. I come in peace, Palantir. I like you. Stop yeah, the they ought to come on. They ought to come on. I got to tell you, they thought I hated them. I didn't hate them. There's no animus there. What are they like? They're not the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they should come on the show and talk about that last quarter. It was pretty good. For months, it seems Oh, to my God. Down. Okay, so listen to me. Carp hates me. I really don't care. You know what? I don't. I don't care. I like what he did. I didn't understand exactly. Exactly that one mentioned about like self fulfillment, but it really wasn't that. I will say they did have a blowout quarter. I like his bombastic nature. I am calling him officially right here, right now, the Dave Portnoy of cybersecurity. Wow, there's a statement. Okay, I think that Palantir quarter was good. I know the stock is straight up. I would like it to come in a little, but it might not. It's down a dollar today. That's your chance to buy a little Palantir. I think it goes higher. I think you actually think it's a 30 or $178 million contract at the moment with the Army. I'm not begging them to come on. I am simply imploring them to come on. I tell you, I think Palantir is... Uh, I mean, I want to be very polite about it. I, I think it's kind of a bit of a bluff artist. They're just not my cup of tea. I like the guys. You want cybersecurity. You go to Palo Alto Networks. You go to Nikesh Aurora.